All right, uh, <clears throat> welcome back. This is the uh, second video discussing advanced launcher for my XBMC home theater setup. Uh, in this particular video, we're going to go over specifically how to uh, use advanced launcher to plug your emulators and ROMs into your XBMC library for all you retro gamers out there uh, that want that ability. Uh, so if you're not familiar with advanced launcher again, uh, or you don't have it installed, I'll leave a link in the description that will guide you uh, to a site that will discuss that. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and, and talk about the configuration and how to get it up and running uh, with your emulators. So with that being said, navigate to uh, Advanced Launcher and get into the context menu and go to the settings here. This is where you uh, set up all of your uh, web-based resources for scraping the information for your video games. Uh, in some people's case, they may have NFO files embedded in the media files that they're going to scrape. Uh, so you can go ahead and leave that uh, as it is, um, as I have. But you can uh, just use the scrapers as well. In the case of emulators, uh, I find that it's best to leave the import mode to automatic um, because you're going to be doing a, a batch upload of all of your ROMs at one time. So I find it personally uh, better to let advanced launcher do all of the heavy lifting and then I can go in after the fact and, and do any cleanup that may be necessary. Now these scrapers uh, again pull all of the uh, artwork and and metadata from web web based resources so just make sure you have one of the video game uh, sources selected. If you want to upload your electronic comic book library into XBMC you can do that as well from Advanced Launcher, and it's the exact same setup that I'm going to cover here for emulators. Uh, just treat each individual title of your comic collection as, uh, as an emulator, and then each individual book of that title would then be uh, the equivalent of the ROMs that I will be discussing. So you would just select the Comic Fine uh, scraper source if you're going to do that. Over here off to the left then you have your artwork uh, information as well. One thing to note is that um, you want to make sure you have the correct region selected uh, for your box artwork unless you want the Japanese box art I suppose. And then again just make sure the background image, the fan artwork, scrapers are configured appropriately. And then one thing to note while we're in the advanced la launcher settings here, uh, make sure you have auto backup enabled. Um, th that way if anything goes wrong uh, throughout the course of your your use of advanced launcher you have something to fall back on a previous state that you can revert to so let's go ahead and get into advanced launcher and now we're going to set this all up um, by default when you start out with advanced launcher for the first time you're only going to have one category listed and that will be called default uh, as you can see here I do have a couple categories already created but we need to create one for our emulator. So go ahead and highlight uh, whatever is there and get into the context menu and create a new category. We're going to call this emulators, obviously. And once you do that, get into that context menu and we want to now add the launcher inside that category. In this case, we're going to be doing an emulator, so make sure you choose the second selection. Again, for comic books, the same thing applies. Now you want to uh, navigate to the executable file for your emulator, or again for comic books, navigate to your eComic reader. <clears throat> Let's see, I had to to dig all this emulated emulated stuff uh, off of an old hard drive, so I don't I don't remember exactly where everything is. I think it's all embedded in here. Yep. Okay. There's the executable file. Point to that, and I believe. Um, my ROMs are all stored in the same place. Right now it's asking where you're going to store all of your files that you're going to launch with that emulator. And I believe, like I said, they're all here. There's the ROM. Yep, there they are. Okay. So that would be where your uh, comic book library would be stored if you're doing your comic books. Here you want to uh, specify what the file extension is that is associated with this uh, with this particular emulator. Uh, this is a Nintendo emulator, uses .NES file extensions. Just make sure you uh, double check your ROM collection and see which extensions you are using. For comic books, uh, you need to do the same thing. Double check which archives uh, format you're using. Leave the arguments alone and then rename the title for your library.
for us that would be Nintendo and then tell Advanced Launcher exactly which system you're using scroll down there it is and the thumbnails and other various artwork again I keep all of this stuff located on my uh, media server but just point it to a folder where you're going to store all of your artwork do the same thing for your background images, your fan artwork. Okay. And there we have it. It's now set up and uh, ready to go. However, if we click enter, we don't have any items in, the, in this list yet. So we need to get into the context menu uh, for that emulator and add our items. And here is where we're going to scan that folder that we set up uh, just a few moments ago. So I'm going to go ahead and start that and I'll pause the recording while it does it and come back once it's done. Okay, so Advanced Launcher is about done uh, scanning that folder and importing all of the files into our library. Looks like there were uh, 20 some odd files, so it didn't take too terribly long, um, probably about all of two minutes. So if we jump in here now, you'll see that it, we have all of our ROMs loaded. It pulled all of the various metadata and artwork. Everything looks pretty good. I have two punch outs for some reason. Oh, you know what? I think I remember one of these was broken and I just never removed it from the folder. Let's go ahead and change the view type so it more closely resembles the rest of my collections. And we'll go ahead and jump into one of these and so you can get an idea of how this functions. Oh, shoot. I should have, should have made sure that uh, my PS3 controller was connected by Bluetooth first. Okay, sweet. It's nice when that works out. Still connected. All right, so you can see that XBMC has gone to the background, and we are now inside our NES emulator. It's running perfectly smooth. Um, with these emulators, your your computer should be able to run both of these programs um, just fine. However, there is a method um, I haven't looked into it in great detail to where you can actually uh, send suspend XBMC once you launch an executable in Advanced Launcher and then bring it back up once you close it. So that might be something I look into in the future. But right now, especially for emulators and, and my computer specifically, um, it runs even PC games just fine with XBMC in the background. So there you have it. I actually managed to complete the first floor of this game. That's kind of amazing. I haven't played that forever. Um, so yeah, right back into XBMC after closing out of, uh, out of that emulator. And now to actually um, make this a more efficient process, so you don't have to get into uh, XP or get into Advanced Launcher, navigate to it, find your Nintendo emulator, we're going to go ahead and add this to Favorites, and I'll tell you why. Uh, generally speaking, if you wanted to get into, get to it right after you set it up, if you exited back out to the main menu, you'd have to get into Advanced Launcher navigate to your emulator, pick your emulator, and then get in and find your game. Um, in order to make this a little bit easier, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my gaming category here, and I'm going to make a change to my main menu. And we already have gaming highlighted, so we'll go over to the left, which is our submenus, and we're going to replace this with a favorite. There it is, Nintendo Entertainment System. So now, if we back out to the main menu, I can get to my ROM library directly from there. So it really does make it a seamless experience and rounds out uh, a really a really good uh, user interface for your XBMC home theater setup. So I hope these videos have been uh, helpful to at least somebody out there. Um, you know, I'm by no means an expert, but uh, feel free to hit me up with any questions or comments you may have. You can find me here and on Google+. But uh, until next time, I guess uh, we'll see you around.